Hi, my name's Phil, I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss Boris Johnson's latest verbal diarrhea whilst out and about in Scotland. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So, in an attempt to show that Boris Johnson is keen on uniting the country, despite all the evidence to the contrary, he has been visiting parts of the UK well outside of the usual southeast of England bubble. Yesterday, he was in Scotland meeting First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, shaking her hand at Butte House, to a chorus of the loudest boos from members of the public outside as well. It has been reported that Sturgeon has made an appointment to get her hand sandblasted clean after the event before resuming her normal duties. And it's not just ordinary Scots or even the SNP that are hostile to Johnson. The Scottish Conservatives under the leadership of Ruth Davidson are not impressed with the prospect of a no-deal Brexit. Although Johnson insisted he was still working to get a deal, that didn't cut any ice with anyone who sees exactly what's going on. Even Michael Gove, a member of Johnson's new cabinet, has said that the assumption is that governments are going to be working on a no-deal Brexit. To that end, they are having daily meetings on how to prepare for this. Johnson also did nothing to heal the rift between himself and Scottish Conservatives by sacking the Scotland minister, David Mundell, who was popular in the role. He also pissed off a few people by appointing an Englishman as Under Secretary of State for the Scottish office. It's almost like he wants to drive a wedge between Westminster and Scotland. But with Boris Johnson, it is sometimes hard to tell the difference between calculating evil and thoughtless idiocy. Like the saying goes, never attribute to malice that which may be explained by incompetence. But Johnson also revealed his Brexit strategy, and it's a belter. So during the election campaign, he said that he would definitely be getting a deal with the EU that Parliament can support. He specifically said that the backstop would disappear and unicorn rides would be on him. Boris Johnson has been invited to visit France and Germany to meet with Macron and Merkel, respectively. So have these dates been added to the diary in order for him to crack on with negotiations? No, there are no negotiations. And this is the quite brilliant part of the whole plan. Boris Johnson has said that the EU should drop the backstop and give us a full trade deal with no red tape whatsoever. And until they do that, he's not going to attend any meetings with representatives of the EU, whether the Council or the Commission. In fact, it's been reported that he hasn't even contacted the Irish Prime Minister by phone when it is the relationship between the two parts of Ireland that are claimed to be the sticking points on this issue. So his offer is that the EU should destroy the legal integrity of their single market, the core of the largest free trade area in the world, and also allow us full access without any legal responsibilities on our part. And that they should just do it. Not talk more about it, not discuss it. Do it or piss off. That's his stance. And, and, and what is it that the UK is offering in return for this remarkable demand? Well, the EU get to carry on doing business with the magnificent, marvellous British people. Genius, isn't it? I mean, I don't know why David Davis or Theresa May didn't put it quite like that. We could have saved all the bother. Seriously, I feel I now have to apologise not only for the abhorrent behaviour of our so-called Prime Minister, but also emphasise that most people in this country, yes, even most of the people who wanted to leave and still do, are not actually that arrogant or despicable. The reason he's saying this is not because he expects the EU to kowtow to us, but because he wants no deal and he just needs to make sure it's the EU's fault when it happens, or at least that's the narrative he wants to push. At this point, even discussing the prospects of the EU blinking is stupid. There is no political pressure for them to blink. There's no economic pressure for them to blink. And besides, what we are demanding is not even legally or politically possible. And and and. That in itself demonstrates that Boris Johnson's government neither expects nor wants the EU to change the deal. They are deliberately saying that they should change it to something that's not legally possible. What more tells you that they don't want a deal? This is the culmination of a long drawn out plan to plunge the country into economic chaos for the financial benefit of disaster capitalists. But once it's over and the people who voted at this look around at the wasteland that they will now struggle to survive in, Boris Johnson would still quite like people to vote for him. So he wants to make it clear that he was all for a deal, but it's the evil EU being unreasonable that stopped it. That all the fallout from Brexit is not because of Brexit, but because of the EU. In yet another example of doublespeak, he keeps this line that Britain is great on its own, believe in Britain, we can make it on our own. And yet somehow, both he and Dominic Raab as it comes to it, are saying that actually, if it turns out we don't do so great after all, it's actually the EU's fault. 
you know, he's basically saying that we actually can't cope without the goodwill of the EU. And he'll hope that enough people are thick enough to believe it. Needless to say that the markets made clear what they think of this. The pound had already been sliding as it became obvious that Johnson was going to be leading us into the valley of death. And it slid a bit more on yesterday's ramblings from him as well. Given that Boris Johnson was never going to be given a warm reception, even by Scottish Conservatives, you might wonder why he even visited Scotland. Opinion seems to be that he simply had to, or it would look like the union means nothing to him. You've got to bear in mind there are people in the Conservative Party who want the UK to remain united. I mean, it means nothing to Boris Johnson. I've long argued that Conservatives would prefer it if it was just England and Wales, or perhaps even just England. Yes, we'd become a much poorer nation, especially coupled with Brexit, but the individuals behind this wouldn't personally become poorer. They may become wealthier. And politically, the Conservatives have their support base almost entirely in England. They do poorly elsewhere. And so shedding a load of regions where they have virtually no chance, if actually no chance, of ever getting 50% of those seats anyway, that just makes it easier for them to get into government more often and to stay there for longer. There's more than just the union at stake here. The whole fabric of what remains of British society will change out of all recognition without Scotland being part of the UK. And I suppose for Boris Johnson, it was probably a day where he could relax. He was always going to be met with frowns and dour expressions in Edinburgh. So we could just go in, be outrageous and bang on about whatever nonsense first came to mind in the full knowledge that there was nothing he could say that would have a political cost because he had no chance of winning people over anyway. For her part, I'm sure Nicola Sturgeon was delighted with the way the day went. She has always regarded Boris Johnson as a great boon for the SNP. He's her most important marketing tool now that he's Prime Minister. Naturally, Johnson was asked about the possibility of a second Scottish referendum on independence. And although he said he'd not be in favour of it, he says, no, we shouldn't be doing this. He didn't categorically say no. You know, perhaps a hint that he's not actually that opposed to it at all. Couple this with his disregard for any attempts at bridge building. It might even be seen that Boris Johnson would not be a stalwart opponent of Scottish independence after all, simply playing lip service to objections. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.